Welcome. Thank you very much indeed. It's very nice to see you all. And I'm sorry it's such a kind of weird way of doing this, but it's better than nothing is our view. So let me just do some introductions first of all. So I'm uh, Tony Grabbler and I represent uh, One Is Its Court with Michelle Manashi. She'll wave to you. There you are. Um, and this is the 25th year of these awards, which we do in conjunction uh, with the Times newspaper. Um, first of all, I'll, I'll introduce you to the members of the panel whose task it was to mark the uh, winning essays, and they're all with us this afternoon. First of all, there's the Lord Chancellor, and uh, you can see him, and he's, he's waving, and he's properly dressed, you see, with a tie on, unlike Ian Brunskill and I. Um, uh, as indeed is uh, Lord Lloyd Jones. So the Lord Chancellor is Robert Buckland. He's a QC and a Member of Parliament, and he uh, very kindly chaired the panel. Uh, then there's Lord Lloyd Jones, and you can see as well. Uh, he's a Justice of the Supreme Court. I'm sure needs no introduction. I'm particularly grateful to him because he stepped in at the last minute to replace Lord Kitchen, who became ill. And uh, we wish Lord Kitchen well, and we understand that he's um, well on the mend, and uh, we send him our best regards. But particular thanks to uh, you, David, for stepping into the breach at very short notice. Then we have Ian Brunskill, who's a, a key figure here because he has a keen eye for a publishable piece of writing. And, um, and so he's the crucial person in this story. Uh, because the winning essay will be published um, in the Times. And then we have all six winning essay writers with us. So I'm going to introduce you in alphabetical order um, and um, just wave your, wave your arms when, uh, or whatever you want to wave, uh, when I say the name. So Afia Amisu, if I pronounce that properly. Hi. Uh, Carola Binney. Uh, Theo Dixon. Uh, Charlene Hamilton and Michael O'Connor and uh, Eugene Tang. Very good. I'm, I'm really well done and we're really pleased to see you all. And many congratulations to each one of you. Now, just to remind you, you've probably forgotten, but to remind you, there are three runners up prizes, each of a thousand pounds. There's a third prize of £1,500, there's a second prize of £2,500, and a first prize of £3,500. And as I indicated, uh, the winning essay will be published in the Times. Now, usually we have a dinner. So this is all normally done at a dinner in some very smart uh, rendezvous. But of course, because of the pandemic, we've not been able to do that uh, this year but we're very hopeful that next year we'll be able to do it. And what we're going to do is we're going to invite all of you uh, to join us at the dinner uh, next year. So we look forward to that and we hope it, that it all works out. But the important point is you're not going to miss um, a dinner and it's always a jolly occasion. And then you won't also, you won't have the kind of anxiety of waiting for the announced results, which uh, you probably do have uh, now. So I'm nearly done. I just want to thank Jackie Ginty, who's our Deputy Senior Clerk, Kirsty Huff and Jack Miller, who are members of our clerks room, who were involved in the administrative work that was uh, involved in uh, getting all the essays together and arranging for them all to be uh, marked until the best 12 came before the panel that I've just introduced you to. So that's all I wanted to say. And I'd like now to invite the Lord Chancellor and uh, he'll have a few words to say, including telling us who has won what. Well, thank you very much indeed, Tony. And it's a huge pleasure to join you, fellow judges, uh, for today's event. And I just wanted to thank the Times newspaper and indeed Chambers at One Essex Court for making this happen, not just the virtual event, but the whole uh, exercise, which um, uh, has many moving parts, as we know, and uh, although uh, it seems to go like clockwork, is the result of a lot of hard work done behind the scenes. Now, if I was to ask my predecessors as Lord Chancellor, I'm pretty sure that they would tell you that this event, the Law Awards, is one of the highlights of their year. The opportunity to read and judge the entries to this competition 
is a reminder that those of us who've made the law our life's work are only its custodians for the time being. There's a next generation of legal thinkers with new and different and exciting ideas about how our justice system should evolve and improve to serve the needs of everyone in our country. And as our essayist pointed out, stereotyping and unconscious racial bias are issues that all of us should be invested in. Where there are racial disparities in the justice system, equality before the law, which is a cornerstone of justice in our country, simply cannot exist. And for those of us who love the law and all of it represents, we have a responsibility, a duty to do something about that. And one of the recurring themes of the essays was the visibility and participation of black and minority ethnic people in our justice process. As was explained so eloquently, those who uh, staff and work in our justice system do not always reflect the makeup of society as a whole. Now, I I'm convinced that diversity is a strength it amplifies more and varied talents, and it builds trust amongst communities who could currently look around a courtroom on some days and frankly not see anybody who looks like them. And that matters, not because of some high ideal about democracy and representation. It matters because it's crucial to addressing those disproportionate outcomes. For example, we, we know that young black men are, are more likely to plead not guilty, despite the evidence, and against the advice of lawyers. It's no coincidence that this is the case for a group that has comparatively low trust in our criminal justice system. And we know that is a key reason that they get longer sentences on average for the same crimes committed by others. Now the Law Society and the Bar Council and Silex, which is the legal executive's representative body, are all working to make our legal profession more diverse with schemes to support emerging talent financially, with work experience and mentoring, to name but a few examples. Now, the figures are moving in the right direction. And I, as Lord Chancellor, am acutely aware that the people who practice the law today could be, will be, the judges of tomorrow. So we're determined to work with the professions to capitalise on that important work so that we can bring more diverse appointees onto the bench than ever before. Alongside the Judiciary and the Judicial Appointments Commission, we're delivering a wide range of initiatives to improve judicial diversity in both professional and lay ranks, including recruitment drives, application support, and more attractive working arrangements. Whilst I mention the Judiciary, it's worth saying that those who preside over the criminal courts have an unenviable task in trying to apply the law consistently in sentencing. The Sentencing Code, which came into force just a few months ago, has now streamlined that process, making it easier for sentences to identify and to apply the law. And it's also increased transparency in this area, which I hope will reinforce the idea that it works in a way that is truly fair for all people who come before it. And I also think that we should be working towards a future where we are just as likely to see a black or minority ethnic person on the bench or in chambers, or indeed in a prison governor's office or on the parole board, as we are to see them in any other walk of life. And that visibility should help us to ensure that no one feels that justice is something that is done to them, but rather that they are just as active in the process of carrying it out for the good of any, everyone as any other member of our society. As I'm sure our winners tonight would say, visibility and diversity in the legal profession is a good start, but it won't be a quick fix. Making progress on these issues is going to take time, will and effort. A generational shift, if you like, right across our justice system. And our essayists have given me plenty of food for thought about the ways in which we can do that. And I want to congratulate them once again for the quality and thoughtfulness of their work. I suspect that many of you are gonna to continue to be a part of this conversation as you begin your own careers and become the next custodians of our law. I'm truly excited to see what you are going to achieve and I very much hope that yours will be the generation where ethnicity starts to become an increasingly meaningless predictor of an individual's likelihood of coming before a court, of being convicted and of being sent to prison. And I will certainly continue to pay my part in working towards uh, that aim. Well, thank you for listening and apologies for keeping all of you on tenterhooks. 
I want to say a big well done to everybody for, for entering, and I can now announce the prizes or award in the following way. There are three runners up, uh, and they are as follows. Eugene Tang, Theo Dixon, and Charlene Hamilton. And my congratulations to all three of you. And then in third place, the prize goes to Afia Amesu. And then in second place, uh, the prize winner for his essay is Michael O'Connor, which means that this year's Times uh, uh, Essay Award uh, is given to Carol Binney, with warm congratulations. Thank you very much. Well, very well done. And thank you very much, Lord Chancellor. That is uh, absolutely terrific. And uh, congratulations uh, to all of you. Um, the, with the wonders of modern technology, you should be getting money into your bank account sometime tomorrow to reflect your success uh, that's just been announced. So we wish you all well. I do look forward to seeing you again. And I hope across a very wonderful dinner table uh, around about this time next year. So thank you very much for participating and good luck with your careers. And um, thank you for your entries. Uh, nice to see you all and thanks everybody for joining us for this uh, for this occasion thanks very much indeed <music>